Hey, it's Jed here. I'm just standing by our herb garden. It's on the south side of our house, so it's lots of good sun. Uh, we have a lot of mulch in here because it does get dry in the summertime, and you want to protect it in the winter. And a lot of these have become perennials around here. That's really one of the cool things that you can do with herbs. Uh, they become perennials, and you can enjoy them year after year, and they even start showing up right in the early spring. So Sean is going to walk through and just talk about what some of these flowers and herbs, why we have them planted here, and uh, and then how we're, we're actually going to start dehydrating those today. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. All right, so I'm going to hand it over to Shauna and she's going to walk us through the Gorham's Herb Garden. This is our horseradish plant. We will be harvesting this later in the season, um, digging up the roots and making our own horseradish sauce. And behind it is one of the comfrey plants that we have. Um, the bees have really liked this this year. It is medicinal. It's not something that you will um, consume. Uh, it can actually make you sick, but for topical treatments, it's really, really good. And we do find that our birds will eat it, our chickens and our ducks, and it's fine for them, but it's not something that we will eat. Uh, it also makes a really good mulch for your garden, so you can cut off the leaves and chop them up and put them on your garden, um, and it adds nutrients to your soil. Here we have some free dill that we were able to acquire and it's not looking great, but we will still be able to use some of it in the pickles that we do. So you can either use the seed heads in the pickles or you can use the leaves. They both have really nice dill smell. This is lemongrass and we can harvest a few of these. Um, this is just grass, so we put the lemongrass in the cinder block so we know which one it is. This is sage, we'll be harvesting from this today. And this is hollyhock, which actually you can use the roots of this. Um, I'm not going to be doing that. I need to do a bit more research to know all of what I would want to do with that. I just like it because it's pretty. And then these will, the seed heads or the buds will dry out, seed heads will dry out and they just will fall and come back again next year. This is thyme that isn't doing really well right now, but hopefully through the season it will get a little bit bigger and then we can harvest from that. So we'll still leave this one for now. This one is an oregano, a small one. So we're going to be leaving this one. We might trim, we'll trim a little bit to take the buds off so that we can get more of the actual growth into the plant so that it doesn't go to seed. This is yarrow that we actually transplanted here on purpose because it's um, very medicinal. We use the leaves for, um, they're a styptic agent. So they're really good at stopping blood. That's just one of the uses. Some of these here are just annual flowers because they're pretty. This is a calendula and that's what these are here. And we'll be harvesting from these today. And we did plant some of them but they will also go to seed. You can see maybe some of them and then they'll fall down. And so some of them will come back year after year, although they're not perennial, um, they will act like that because they drop their seeds. But we usually start some each year anyway, just to plant more. What's the calendula good for again? The calendula is good for making your own oils and salves. Um, they're very good for your skin, but this is a, a perfect time to harvest this. So we'll take them, we'll put them in the dehydrator, and you want to make sure that they're completely dry when you dehydrate them um, so that they don't mold. This one is an echinacea coneflower, I'm pretty sure. Basil, we'll harvest from this one because we don't want it to go to seed. 
so we will we'll cut it down a little farther and then it'll grow more from the other two that are there and bush out more and it will continue to grow rather than throw up seed heads with the onion or the basil That's I'm not basil more oregano. oregano more oregano this one has gone to seed or to flower this one has gone to flower so we will take some of that off and some of the ones that are standing up more. We actually ran out of our oregano last year that we had dried and just used in recipes. So we want to make sure we have enough. Onions we have just growing in the garden. Parsley, one of the favorite just snacks. We will take some and dehydrate, but it does lose some of its flavor. This one is lemon thyme. And this one has come back from last year. So we will trim it back and use that and a weed. And this one is lemon balm, which is looking really nice. And so far we haven't used it in a lot of different things. We do, it is really nice in a, just a tea or a drink. Um, but we haven't gotten a whole lot of different things that we've used it for. Again, starting to flower. So we want to trim that back so that we have more plant growth. Because you can harvest your herbs all season long. You don't have to wait till the end of the season. You want to continue to harvest. And then the plants will just continue to grow and be healthy. So, And you get a lot more out of your plants when you continue to harvest them. This one is a catnip or catmint, um, which our one cat likes to actually come and lay in here. And again, it's something that's really good for drying and using for teas. It's very good for digestive issues. It's really calming for your stomach. And it's part of the mint family. Um, down here we have more parsley. And these two are lavender that we got this year. There is some growth in them already. Lavender actually don't like good soil, so I don't know if I should move these ones and put them in a more sandier and less nutrient-dense soil. Our lavender plant that we had for a few years before didn't survive this winter, and it was in the same location. It did really well for a few years, and then it just died. So we're still working on figuring out lavender. This is another lemongrass doing very well. So we'll take some from this and dehydrate it this year. And another oregano that is really shooting up flowers. So we'll cut this back pretty far today um, and we'll dehydrate that and we'll get another good harvest from that. Behind here we have a couple different types of sage. So this one we'll be taking from, there's quite a bit here as well, that we'll take from this one to use throughout the winter months. And then this one is more of a, an ornamental sage. It's just pretty. And there's another one in behind there that has different colors on it. I don't know the names of them specifically, but if you could smell them, Beautiful. What do we have here? Chives. Chives are everywhere here, all over the garden. So today we're going to cut back some of our herbs to dehydrate. Uh, you can use scissors. I have a good pair of clippers here that are nice and sharp that'll work really well. Mm. And we can either bundle and hang to dehydrate, or you can, we have a dehydrator, so we'll just put them in that and then it doesn't take very long for them to be fully dry, dehydrated and then we usually store them in mason jars. The sun's shining today and it's mid-morning so they'll still have the volatile oils in the plants. So that's, this is when you want to harvest them um, rather than late waiting till afternoon and the oils are going back into the plant. So this is the best time and I'm just going to go down here.
and we'll trim back some of this basil not basil oregano <laughs> around the chives and you can go down pretty far with this and move that one This one is just a weed. It's very prickly underneath the leaves and all the way down the stem. But at the end of the stem, right next to the ground, there aren't prickles. So that's the best way to pull this one out right along here. It's not prickly, so you can pull them out from the base without getting prickly. Now we're going to do sage. And I'm going to go right between a couple of the leaves and you can see there's some little spots here I don't know if you can see that little spots here but I think it can regrow from those so we'll go down see where it's this one's better if you cut down in here it will grow from those spots in there This one's an older plant. So where you give the oregano kind of an overall haircut, you want to be a little bit more particular where you take from the sage. We're going to trim off the calendula flowers. We just take the blooms, ones that haven't gone too far, these ones we won't take. Um, but these you can take off the ones that have finished. You can break them up a bit and drop them and they can come back next year. That one's okay. And you want to watch for your bugs and your bees because they do really like these. So that's all we need to take and we'll again dehydrate these and we'll use the petals in our uh, medicinal oils and we can talk about that at another time. That's it. You see how so sometimes we also plant our herbs within some of our plants because uh, they're really good. We do like to companion plant. And what that means is that when there's a plant that gets along really well with another one and they help each other grow, we'll plant them together. So here we have this tomato that's sitting in a great big pot. And as you can see, we have a lot of wonderful bunches of parsley growing out of it. And again, it's better to take it now so that this parsley has a chance to grow a little better. So I'm going to come through and, and just trim up this uh, quite a bit and give another haircut in a couple weeks. And sometimes you don't even need to use a trimmer. In fact, with parsley and basil, sometimes it's better to just pinch your fingers off and pull it off that way because the plants aren't too um, tough. And when you pinch it off, it creates another place for those branches to, it'll literally start to branch out right where you pinched off. And your fingers and thumbs smell like whatever plants you're doing. So with parsley and basil, it's good. I wouldn't advise it for garlic and onions though. So while we're out here, we're going to grab a few things for lunch. So here we have some lovely kale that has really taken well to this spot. And although kale tends to get better after a frost, it's still good for a salad right now. So here's some kale and take some of that as well. In here we have some lettuce that is bright red. So it's easy to find amongst what I call wild vegetables. Other known people will call them weeds, but many of these things that I'm picking around 
such as the lamb's quarters, and there's also right beside me, these lamb's quarters are also edible. They're like a wild spinach. Uh, this one's kind of been ravaged by, looks like slugs, so I won't be taking too much off this one today. Oh, and by the way, we also have some better looking dill. So this dill is planted here because we were hopeful to have cucumbers growing with it. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see on that. They're not, uh, not looking so good. Okay, so now that we are inside with our herbs, we're going to work on dehydrating them. And one of the simplest ways to do that is to take a little bundle, um, not too thick, so that they all dehydrate. And then you take a bit of kitchen twine and just tie a knot in one end of it. And then you loop it around. Oops. And pull this through near the end here. Okay, so it makes a little noose, I guess you could say. And then as that hangs, it'll just pull tighter. And you can just stick it up. I don't know that I can reach that nail there, but you just hang it up somewhere um, and you just leave it for a while and let it dry. Now it can get dusty depending on uh, where you put it, so it's not necessarily the most ideal way to do it, but it will absolutely work. It's a way that's been used for thousands of years. So then we can move on to other types like a dehydrator. Um, this first one here is a uh, Ronco and it's round and stacks up on top of each other and on the bottom you have the heating element in the fan and then you just put your herbs inside spread out on the trays and then the heat will just come up and will dehydrate them. This one though doesn't have a temperature control and so you just kind of go with what the heat is that's in there. So if it's something that uh, it doesn't matter what the temperature is, you just want to dehydrate it, then this is a good choice to use. And then we have the Excalibur here that this one is a bit of an investment because you have the temperature control and the time control and it's nice and big. Oh. And we have a few nasturtium leaves that we had dehydrated last year that I completely forgot about. So I'm just going to shake those off. So you have your little mat that fits in to your square. And then you would just take your herbs and spread them evenly out. And you can just take off the pieces that you're going to want to use. And then your stems can go to the chickens or on the compost pile. And then we just spread out the rest of them. So now we're down to our last tray and we're doing our calendula flowers. And I like to put them face down on the tray. It spreads them out a little bit more. If you leave them up like this, sometimes they just curl over. And I find they dehydrate quicker when you put them face down. And you can see all the herbs that we now have stacked up. So the parsley took the space of two trays. So we'll have an extra one that we need to leave out. This should fit. You might need to squish them down just a little bit to keep them from flipping over. And we have two trays full of oregano and one of sage. We'll leave our spare on top. So we have our temperature set to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is good for herbs. You like a low temperature so that you're still keeping the oils and nutrients. And we have it set for about seven hours. So the beep will go off and then we'll check it after that. And that's it. It's good to just leave it and go. dehydrating or at least we're going to check and see uh, I think it went overnight anyway um, from when we had started it and I'm gonna take out the oregano 
And it's all quite crispy. You want to make sure it's very crispy so that none of it is moist in any way because it can mold and then cause all of it to go bad. And we like to use um, old sauce jars sometimes because they do fit to the regular sized mason jar lid. And then it's fine even if you still have some, oh, this one's a little bit bendy. So I can take the leaves off that. Even that one isn't completely dry, so I'll set that one aside. You can stick stems and all in. And just keep going until you've filled up your jar. You can definitely push it down. I'm just using a canning funnel for this so that I get less mess on the counter. And you can even, as long as this is still, okay, that's parsley, crispy, lift up your mat and shake some of those in. I'll take out the big sticks. Push that in and you can also use the lids from the sauce jar, they have the rubber seal in them too, so they will seal well, um, which is similar to the mason jar lid. This is just an old lid that we had that we can reuse for this kind of thing. So it seals well for this to keep the freshness in the jar. So that's a little bit of what we have learned how to do here at uh, our Clearwater North. And this is one of the places where we started to learn about homesteading. We started with dehydrating our, dehydrating our herbs, just hanging them up and keeping them for later in the year. A lot of the reasons why we do this is because we don't have a growing season that will produce these herbs all year round. So that's why we dehydrate a fair amount of what we grow to make it through the entire year. So Shauna, how about you just explain a little bit about what homesteading is to us? This is our kind of first video. Uh, we're glad you're joining us, but uh, with homesteading. Um, homesteading for us uh, has been about learning new skills, um, expanding our own skill sets and just learning how to use what's around us, how to provide some things for ourselves. We certainly don't um, provide everything that we eat but um, there's many things that we do know how to do now and we're continuing to, to learn. We love to learn from other people and we love to help other people to learn as well. So it's been a fun journey and we're constantly trying to add to our skill sets. And with what we're doing here in homesteading, it also helps for great opportunities for hospitality, which is really what we're about. Helping to encourage others with what we've learned and homesteading and hospitality, because you can do this yourself. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you again sometime soon. Bye. Bye.